These are the solutions for the first practice quiz. Um, quiz one in the second try. So you're going to want to have this page of notes here to refer to. And this first tier one problem is you want to list the zero based on the factor. So a factor of x has a, um, a zero root. I'll write that above it. And its multiplicity is one. And then we come upon x minus 3, so its 0 is 3, and its multiplicity is 3, the power is 3. Then we have x plus 5, its 0 is negative 5, multiplicity 1. <clears throat> then we have x minus 1, its 0 is 1, multiplicity 2, and then 2x plus 3, its 0 is negative 3 halves, and a multiplicity of 3. Pretty simple to do, you just have to go left to right with it. So leading coefficient here, negative 4 times 1 to the third times 1 times 1 squared times 2 to the third. So 2 to the third is 8, the rest are 1s, and then 8 times that negative 4 in front is negative 32. So you need to make sure that you take this coefficient out here and then multiply by all these coefficients on the x terms and don't forget to raise it to the power uh, that coefficient on the x term raise it to the power on the outside of the parentheses to get that and then also there's the y-intercept that's involved with that but it doesn't ask for that so standard form equation again you should do some of these I will this time provide you the answer I'm not going to cover this because my video is going to be long enough but you can double check your work if you want to expand one of these. However, you can just check your answer as you're doing this. So that degree is odd, three. The leading coefficient is negative two. So you can see that on the expansion there. You would do negative two times one squared times one without that. The y-intercept is negative six. Again, that's that end value. And then left end behavior, this is an odd negative, so we'll have infinity and negative infinity. So it's going to be up here, I'm going to do some stuff, and then come down on the right. So we have x plus 3 with a 0 of negative 3 multiplicity of 1, and we have x minus 1 with a 0 of 1 and a multiplicity of 2. What does that look like on the graph? So negative 3, negative 6 somewhere down here, and then 1. Let me get this up in the picture here. I know you're all screaming, move your paper up. Uh, and then we just have to sketch the graph. So multiplicity of 1 means it cuts through. And you can look um, on your calculator, you know, to get the idea of it right. So. 1 has a multiplicity of 2, it's going to bounce back in the same direction that it came from. Read often uh, the list of this, this material here will help you in this. So read it and, and learn it, the little paragraphs at the bottom. All right, so that's the first page. Second page, and notice I just flat out blotted out the standard form there. Degree is odd. Um, it's 5. So 3 plus 1 plus 1, it's the added powers um, outside of the parentheses. Leading coefficient is 1. So it's 1 cubed times 1 times 1. Y-intercept is 9. So that's negative 1 cubed times 3 times negative 3. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9. Those two negatives would make a positive. And then left end behavior, so odd positive is negative infinity, positive infinity. This really is pretty simple once you get it. Um, you're also welcome to enter this in your calculator and check things out. So here are your factors. And then the multiplicity is the powers on each of these, so 1, 3, and 1. Again, the order that you write them in the table doesn't matter. I like to write them left to right as far as like how you'd place them on the 
x-axis. So up at 9, and then 1 is a triple root, so it's going to flatten out as it gets there. So you got it coming up like this through negative 3, and come back down through 9. Now it's going to flatten out through 1, like so. And you just need to try your very best to show that that you're indicating that. And uh, again, you can graph it and take a peek. It should be close. Always, when you do these, times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Oops, I did something. What did I do? X minus 1 to the third. Oh, no parenthesis here. That's what I did. The littlest of things. So you see it there. Um, it is going up. You can zoom out to see everything. There's my little reminder again. Um, you can see that it would, it would indeed go up there. So every once in a while, check it out. Problem five, much more of the same. So here you have to actually go in and use a zero finder to find your, your zeros, which would be negative one and two, and then two would appear twice. So it it's like saying the double root. So 1, 0, negative 3, and 4, I'm sorry, 1, negative 3, 0, and 4 in a zero finder, or just type it in the internet, and it will deliver to you these multiplicities here. So then you can write out um, x plus 1. Make sure you get the factors. It's always opposite with the factors from the zero. The reason is that when you put in the x value that's a zero, it gives you zero for y. That's why they call them zeros. The whole overall thing is zero when you multiply it out. So we have an odd positive. We have degree three. Leading coefficient is one. You can get that from the standard equation. Y intercept is four. You can get that from the standard equation. Here are the end behaviors. Again, there's a reason why the end behaviors are that way. So when you have an odd power, a negative to an odd is a negative. So that's the highest power of x to the third will take over and make the y's negative way out to the left. And then way out to the right, the, the, um, it's a positive x that you're putting in. So anything raised to the third will be positive. So that x to the third will take over way out to the right. You don't need to know that, but it's always good to know that the highest power term is what takes over in the end behavior. That's the idea. And then what is the sign of it? You can also just look on your calculator to see end behavior. So at 2, it's going to bounce back up if it's a double root. And uh, there it is. Again, I'm not real picky on, like, where does it exactly does it turn. It probably turns at a little about at 1 half here. Comes a little bit out more. Just uh, know that it does turn, then it comes back down to 2 and bounces back in that same direction. Okay, given the graph. Actually, this is probably a little easier than tier 2. Uh, so we have negative 1 is a single root. We have 1, that's a single root. And we have 3, that's a double root. Now, how can we tell this? Because it bounces back and it's not flattening out anywhere so um, that's definitely the powers and I will provide you the standard form I'm not gonna spend time on this video um, multiplying all this out but this is the standard form x to the fourth minus 6x to the third 
plus 8x squared plus 6x minus 9. So we have an even positive. Okay, the degree is 4, the leading coefficient is 1. Y-intercept is negative 9. So once, you know, you can get the expanded form there, do what I've shown you in the past. Um, I got, you know, 1 times 1 times 1 squared is 1. And then for negative 9, um, 1 times negative 1 times negative 3 squared is negative 9. Left-end behavior. You can tell this by looking at the graph. They're both positive infinities. All right. And that will do that problem. It might have been easier than the tier twos. Then we have, of course, our spiral problems. So this is uh, to sharpen you for your SAT. So the 0.36 lies on this. That means we, that means we substitute it in. 6 is y and 3 is x. Solve for b. It's a substitution game. I probably could have added 27 and 12 there. Negative 3b plus 39 equals negative 3b. Pretty easy. It's a solve game. And then on 8, it is a foil process game. So you it's factored like this, meaning that this has to be 5 and 1. That's the only way it can be. So you have to foil it out. 1. 1, 1, 1. Sorry. 5x plus 2 times x plus 2. Foil it out. So 5x squared plus 10x plus 2x plus 4. So 5x squared plus 12x plus 4. So m is 12. And that's practice quiz one.